Good afternoon, everybody. Hope the week has treated you extremely well. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the major four uh, indexes in the U.S. market. On the top left portion of your screen, you're going to see the NASDAQ. On the bottom left, you're going to see the Russell 2000. On the top right, you're going to see the Dow Jones. And on the bottom right, you're going to see the S&P 500. Now, each of these charts represents one year's worth of data, and each candle represents one day's worth of trading. And we have a couple of other things on these charts. There's going to be two white lines on each of these. The top white line is the high that was put in in February, and the bottom is going. To, the bottom white line is going to be the low that we put in in February. And last but not least, we have the purple line on the chart. That is the 200-day moving average. And the 200-day moving average for most technicians is kind of that bull bear line in the sand. If we're above the 200-day moving average, the market is typically bullish. If we're underneath the 200-day moving average, the market is typically bearish. Now, we can see that the NASDAQ, the Russell, and the S&P 500 are all over that 200-day moving average, whereas the Dow Jones is underneath of that 200-day moving average. The Dow is also the only index that is red for the year. It's actually down approximately 3%. The S&P 500 is up about three quarters of a percent, so it's pretty flat for the year. The Russell is up 6% approximately for the year, and the NASDAQ's up approximately 9% for the year. So what we have here is a bifurcated market, and what I mean by that is a split market. We've got some of the indices that are doing extremely well, and we've got others that are even red year to date. Now, typically when we have a split market, one of two things is going to happen. The laggers are going to catch up to the leaders, meaning they are going to subsequently uh, follow the leadership. In this example, it would be of the NASDAQ and the Russell, and we'll head higher. Or the leaders can play uh, catch up to the laggers, meaning they fall and follow suit. And in this example, that would be the NASDAQ heading lower, just like the Dow Jones subsequently has done year to date so far. It is very difficult for a prolonged period of time for the market to stay split where you have one of the major indexes continues to make new highs and the other one continues to make new lows. At some point in time, they will play catch up to one another. The question, of course, is will the leaders fall or will the laggers rise? And that's really what we're paying attention to here. Now, we could also just stay in these ranges here on the Dow and on the S&P 500 for quite some time and be in what's known as a range trading environment where we don't make any new highs and we don't make any new lows. Essentially a period of consolidation while the market tries to figure out whether we are going to head on the next move up or down on the next move. So what I'm really paying attention to, I'm going to go through each of the levels on all four of the charts. For starters, the Dow... The most important level for me right now is the lows from February. We're underneath the 200-day moving average, which is not a, a bullish signal, but we have not breached this area of support. And you can see that we tested it three times. We tested it in February. We tested it again in, at the end of March, and we tested it again in the beginning of May. And each of the times that level held. That is a very important technical level. It is a zone of support, and the bulls do not want to see that breached. If that is breached, more than likely we would continue to head to the downside. And so that is the concern. And it would be very difficult, again, for the Dow to make a major breakdown like that and the other indexes hold up well. So this is a very important level that we are closely watching uh, in the short term. Now, when we take a look at the S&P 500, it is essentially trading in the middle of its range. Um, it's got about an equidistance to the upside and to the downside in this particular case. To the uh, February highs, it's got about 6.5% to the upside and 6.5% to the downside to those February lows. Now, this is clearly trading in the middle of the range. And so from a resistance and a support component, we're not near either of these two levels, so it's not as important. We'd like to see it from a bullish perspective stay over the 200-day moving average, but it's pretty much just trading sideways as it's done for most of the year. Now, the Russell 2000 made a breakout back in the beginning of May, beginning middle of May. Now, oftentimes with breakouts, they are back-tested, meaning... This was a level of resistance, and once we have gotten over it, it now should act as a level of support. And so what we're watching on the Russell is for this level to hold, and if it does, we most likely head higher. If it doesn't, 
then that 200 day moving average would be support and then underneath of that those February lows as it sits right now it is holding over that breakout line so the previous level of resistance is acting as support which technically is what it should be doing now the Nasdaq on the other hand it has made new highs back in March it also made new highs um, in uh, the beginning of June it lost that breakout level that breakout level from the March highs was all the way back at 7200 and the high from back in February was rated right about that 7020 zone it is currently underneath both of those so what we're watching for on the Nasdaq is the possibility that this zone right here could be a false breakout where we make a high and then subsequently cannot hold on to it and continue to push higher. Oftentimes, false breakouts have swift moves in the opposite direction. So we need to be careful here, and we really do not want to see the NASDAQ lose this zone, because that would certainly open it up for a larger move to the downside. Regardless of whether this holds or not, there is still a number of levels of support that are in play for the NASDAQ, and we are quite a ways away from the lows that were put back in in February. So to sum up on each of the indexes, the NASDAQ, we're looking at a potential false breakout happening. The Russell 2000, we're watching a breakout get back tested. The S&P 500 is just trading in the, in the middle of a range, and there isn't really anything in the short term that is super exciting technically on this chart. And the Dow Jones, we are watching to see if the major level of support can be held. How each of these indexes reacts to their important level should have an impact and should be important in your trading and investing decisions as we move forward. Uh, next week, I will update you and we'll take a look at how we have traded over the next week and see if any of these levels have subsequently been breached. And we'll look at the technical action on each of these indexes. I hope you guys have yourselves a fantastic weekend. Hopefully you found this video helpful. Uh, have a good one. Take care.